Hello world, this is me. I should be. Okay, everyone, we're going to do some cross country today. We're going to start with the log, then over the double, around the big tree, and back down the hill. Take it easy. This isn't a race. One at a time. Don't start the course until the other rider has finished the combo. Okay, Veronica, go ahead. What do you want me and Patch to do? Same thing, Lisa. But those are really big jumps. You're ready for them. Trust me. OK, Stevie, go ahead. Hey, jockey girl, slow it down. You're next, Lisa. You can do it. You're gonna love it, Lisa. Good boy, Comanche. Okay. <sighs> Go, Lisa. That was amazing. I think you're ready to join the jumping class. You've got real talent. <laughs> you did it. Thanks, Patch. Ah, move it or lose it. You haven't even groomed Cobalt yet. Why do you even have a horse if you never spend any time with him? If you're so worried about him, why don't you take care of him yourself? Fine, I will. If you really want to have fun, when you're done playing stable hand, I'll let you shine my boots. <laughs> you wonder why she's an only child. Why are you making me do this? I told Christy I'd meet her at the mall. The mall can wait. You've got dozens of expensive riding outfits and I hardly ever see you use any of them. But, Mum... Veronica, your father and I pay a lot of money to keep that horse. All I'm asking is that you take an interest in exercise, Cobalt. I told you, Cobalt's fine. I've got someone looking after him. Do you mean Carol? Cobalt looks wonderful. Carol's so graceful on him. I know. She looks like she was born to ride that horse. Get off my horse! He's 
said I could ride him. I changed my mind. Stay away from Cobalt. He's mine. Dr. Judy, I didn't know you were coming. I was just checking on Delilah. So is she okay? Yes, fine. Routine exam. Looks like you've got a friend for life. Must keep you busy. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much live at the barn. Well, I wouldn't expect anything less from my assistant. What? Your work study's been approved. For the next two weeks, you're a vet in training. Yes! <laughs> hey, congratulations. The next Dr. Hanson, huh? Thanks, Dad. <laughs> ah, look what I dug up today. Come on. Now you have to go into the barn and stay there till you're better. Carol? I have to get dinner started. Slow down, Veronica. <laughs> I said slow down. <laughs> Not bad. I never want to see a stunt like that again, Veronica. I didn't mean to approach so fast, Max. It's a miracle you didn't break your neck. Or cobalts. Are we clear? Yeah. Call him out. He totally freaked on you. Don't worry. I can handle Max. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, right. I was just looking for that. I thought you might be. After all, I know you'd never leave Cobalt hot and sweaty after a workout like that. Not without a good grooming. But what about Red? He's supposed to help me. It's his job. It's part of his job, Veronica. The other part is helping me out with chores around the stables. But... My stable hands aren't here just to take care of your horse. If you won't let Carol help you with Cobalt, then I expect to see you around here more often. More often? I'm already here twice a week for my lessons. And Cobalt's here seven days a week. <sighs> You're right, Max. You know, I guess I was just worried that poor Cobalt would miss Red. How thoughtful of you. Well, don't worry. With all the time you'll be spending with Cobalt, you'll forget all about Red. What's wrong? Max is making me take care of Cobalt. Where's Red? That's exactly what I said. 
You know, my parents pay a lot of money to keep Cobalt at Pine Hollow. And all I'm asking is that the stable hand take a little interest. No, I mean, where's Red? I need to talk to him. I don't know. Why? Look, two tickets to the Cram concert. What? Those are impossible to get. Even I couldn't get them. Yeah, well, you didn't camp out all night in line. It was cold and disgusting, but it was totally worth it. I got front row seats. So, of course, they came right over here to ask. I'd love to go. Red, if he'd come with me. Oh, Red. Sure. It's his favourite band. He has to say yes. Wish me luck. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You ready for your first day, Carol? I can't wait. After seeing my mum take care of animals, it's like I already know the job. You're so lucky. You get to spend all day taking care of puppies and kittens. Trust me, they're not so cute when they're throwing up all over you. <laughs> ready to hit the road, Carol? You bet. Good luck. Break a... Actually, don't break anything. Fix something. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Red. I was looking everywhere for you the other day. I had the day off. Could you move over a little? So did you hear about the Cram concert? I heard they sold out in like 10 minutes. People camped outside all night just for tickets and couldn't even get a seat in the back row. <clears throat> Maybe some people couldn't get tickets. What a bunch of geeks. What? I mean, Cram was cool a few months ago, but now they're in every commercial you see. Talk about selling out. <laughs> Pretty lame, huh? Mm. Oh, totally, uh, lame. I just knew you would think it was funny, too. I mean, all those people camping out for, for such a loser band. You've got a nice rhythm there, Sam. Keep that going. Pepper will try to race towards the jump. Your job is to hold him steady. What's he doing? I hope you don't mind sharing your lesson. Sam was sick last week, and this is the only time we could schedule a makeup. I don't mind. It's just that my parents will be a little upset, you know, paying for a private lesson. Well, no problem. We'll make this a group lesson. Good, Sam. Sam the man, excellent work. You felt Pepper rushing and you steadied him right back. Way to go. Good boy, Pepper. Okay, Veronica. I guess you're ready. Steady, Veronica. Pull him back. Bring him to a walk, now. That was a mess. Jumping isn't about racing towards a fence, closing your eyes and hoping you'll crash through it. Cobalt's a terrific jumper. All you have to do is take your time, set him up properly, and he'll do the rest. Sam, let's see you do the combo one more time. Watch the way he steadies Pepper. This isn't a race. Who's our first patient? You're looking at him. Right, I want you to climb in there with Norton and hold him still for me. Norton doesn't look like he wants any company. Dr. Judy Barker.
Hey, Max says you and Pepper looked great out there today. Don't tell me, tell Peppa. He was amazing. Yeah, for an ancient horse. It's probably better, though. You couldn't handle a horse like Cobalt. So did Max say anything about me? Yeah, actually, something about you needing to slow down and think about what you're doing. <laughs> you think that's funny? Yes. Oh, I mean, no. Well, you know what I think is funny? Watching you bump around the course on that flea bag. Pepper's not a flea bag, and I'm a good jumper, Max says. Max says. Well, I say Cobalt and I could outjump you any day. Prove it. Fine. We'll have a jump off. Thursday, six o'clock. Fine. Fine. Wow. Look at you. What were you doing? Wrestling alligators? I think that's tomorrow. I'm so tired. I mean, it's great being around animals all day. But... Come on, Carol. Spill. Well, I've always wanted to be a vet. And... What if I really suck at it? It's only your first day. Yeah. You can't expect to be a pro right away. First day on the job. How was it? Actually, I wanted to talk to you about that. I'm so proud of you. You've always known what you wanted and gone after it. I guess. There's something I've been wanting to give you for quite some time. It was your mom's. Your grandmother gave it to her when she graduated. She took it with her everywhere. I'll probably just wreck it. Well, she wanted you to have it. You might as well just keep it, because I'm not going to be a vet. Oh, 700 hours. Rise and shine. Don't want to be late for work now, do you? I told you, I don't want to be a vet anymore. I'm not going to work. Ah, oh, that's right. You told me. You didn't tell your boss. Can't you talk to Judy for me? Uh-uh. If you want to quit, you're going to have to do it yourself. Dr. Judy! Where have you been, Carol? You're late. I know, but I have to talk to you. I've given it a lot of thought. We'll have to talk later. Right now, I need you to come on a call with me. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. Hey! That's my double oxa. It's salt. Come on, let's get at them all. I can't. I've got the jump off, remember? This is so immature. I mean, what's the point? So that I can wipe that stupid grin off Sam's face. Who cares? Why are you wasting your time with him? Christy, he laughed at me. He's trying to humiliate me in front of everyone. I can't believe you're so obsessed with this jump off. You won't even go shopping. I'm not obsessed. I'm just practicing. I guess I could practice too. I mean, with horses, not salt. Christy, what are you doing? Um, Bark's being used in a lesson. Do you want to help me with Delilah? Did Max say you could ride her? Since when do I have to ask? Max lets me ride her all the time. Sorry, no can do. Dr. Baker would be here to give Delilah a checkup. Until then, Delilah's on vacation. Come on, Red. I won't tell anyone. Max's orders. Great. Now what am I supposed to do? <sighs> we could always use a hand mucking our stalls. I'm 
sorry I mucked up. She looks so sad. I thought she needed a cuddle. If you're going to be a vet, you'll need to be a bit more realistic. That mare needed stitches. We had to do that first. Time for a cuddle after. Oh, come on. You'll do better next time. No, I won't. I can't do this anymore. I quit. What are you talking about? You're a fine assistant. No, I'm not. Every time I get near an animal, I get kicked or trampled or scratched. I make a lousy vet. I'll never be like you or... This is just not going to work. I'm sorry, Dr. Judy. Carol? Wait 58 seconds. No problem. Cobol can do this in his sleep. Shouldn't you be forcing cough syrup down some dog's throat? Not anymore. I quit. What, what happened? happened? Nothing. It's just I changed my mind. But that's what work studies are for, right? To see if you're cut out for the job or not. Well, cheer up. At least you get to see Veronica be totally humiliated. What are you talking about? You'll see. Cobalt's moving so stiffly. She probably didn't even warm him up. What is she doing? Is she winning? You better hope she knocks a row down. She's going way too fast. What is she doing? Slow down! Pull him up! Fix you up. Is he gonna be all right, Daddy? Forget about the horse for now. Just get that arm X-rayed, okay? I want to stay with no, him. No, no, you're in good hands, Veronica. Let your Come father on. take care of the lady. Well, it's a bad fracture, but you can fix it, right? Sometimes a horse's bones can be set like a human's. The cobalt's fractured his sesamoid and his paston. Which means what? Oh, they're the bones in the fetlock. Break them and they almost never heal. But they might. It's up to Mr. D'Angelo, Carol. What sort of odds are we looking at? Well, even if by some miracle the bones did heal, he'd always be in pain. Your recommendation? That's it, then. No! He won't feel anything, Carol. <laughs> you can't. There has to be something else we can do. Carol, this is hard enough for Cobalt. He's in a lot of pain, and you're only making it worse. <gasps> you can save him. <gasps> Keeping him alive 
Doesn't mean anything if he's going to be in pain, Carol. Imagine what it would be like for a strong, healthy animal like Cobalt to live out his days standing around in a stall. But he'd be alive. A horse like Cobalt it would break his heart never to be able to run free again. What kind of vet are you? You're supposed to save animals, not kill them. Carol, I need you to calm down. Let's try to make these last few moments as pleasant as possible for him. You're the most beautiful horse in the world. We're never gonna forget you, Cobalt. Easy, boy. Cobalt loved this field more than any other place. In the few years that I had the privilege of knowing him, I could always count on finding him here. So, it's on this spot that we choose to honor him with this little tree, a token of our love for, for a magnificent horse and a symbol of life to help us accept his death. Cobalt was a special horse. He was brave and proud, courageous, sometimes hot-tempered. He wouldn't be much of a stallion if he wasn't. But he had a gentle soul and a big heart. And I have a feeling if he was here right now, he'd eat all the leaves off this tree. Hollow isn't going to bring Cobalt back. I know, and I know he wasn't my horse, but it felt like it. I loved him so much. I just don't want to do this anymore, okay? Good, Amelia. Good. Next time I want to see you give with your hands. Okay, good. Sam? <laughs> I don't think Pepper's ready. Well, it's your job to make him ready. Let's go. I just don't think it's fair. What? This, the lesson. How can you just pretend like everything's fine, like nothing's changed? Does everyone feel like that? But you're all here for your lesson. What does that tell me? <coughs> that you want to get over what's happened and move on. And that's good. And I assume you want to learn to be better riders, right? It's okay if you're not up to it today, Sam. You want to sit out of the jumping? Okay. Who's next? I'll go. Yep. been fussy about her feet lately. Won't let anyone lift them without a fight. Any sign of pain? Swelling? No. She's just being stubborn. She's entitled. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it, Max. Have you seen Carol late? Not since the memorial for Cobalt. I guess she didn't finish her work study with you. No. I've left a couple of messages for her, but I haven't heard back. She's taken Cobalt's death pretty hard. I know she loved him, but I never thought Carol would quit the stables or her job with you. Oh, she quit before Cobalt died. She did? Mm. Why? Beats me. Maybe I pushed her too hard. 
Sometimes I forget she's just a kid. She's so like her mother. Focused, determined. <laughs> Some would say stubborn. <laughs> oh, Karen, she was so passionate, wasn't she? And she really loved taking care of the animals. Just like Carol. She was really getting into the job. Oh, I don't know what happened. Mm. I wish Karen was here now. She'd know exactly what to say to Carol. I can deal with any equine, feline or canine you care to throw my way. But children, entirely foreign language. No, I wouldn't give up on her just yet. What? I want you to sell Starlight for me. You can't. You can never give him up. I have to. I quit riding, so... So you're insane. Stevie, I don't want to see him. You have to sell him for me. You'll break his heart. What's the point in me keeping him? You bought Starlight with the money your mom left you. You can't just sell him. She knew how much you loved riding. Yeah, I used to. We all feel bad. Then how come you're still riding? Comanche and Patch and Starlight shouldn't be punished. It's not their fault. Fine. I'll do it myself. <sighs> Starlight was so down today. He knows something's wrong. Of course he does. Carol's never been away from him for more than a day. Exactly. She loves horses. She doesn't really want to give it all up. I wish there was something we could do to help her. There is. We can sell Starlight. Stevie, didn't you hear what I just said? Yeah, and I also heard Carol. If she says that she wants to give up the one thing that's more important to her than anything else in the world. She's upset. Why are you being like this? I'm just trying to do what she wants. We'll sell Starlight for her. And I know just the buyer. Looking great, Sam. Keep going. Give him his head. Time. Okay. Why don't you lay off the jumping for a while? Till you're ready. This isn't doing either you or Pepper any good. Okay? You found someone already? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah, it's just so fast. Well, it's better for everyone if we get it over with soon. It's perfect. Starlight really needs a home, and this person really needs a horse. You even know the buyer. Who? Veronica. Veronica! Leave me alone! Ow! Watch my arm! You're not getting Starlight. I don't want your ugly horse. I don't know how you can even look at another horse after what you did to Cobalt. What? How dare you say something? If it weren't for you, Cobalt would still be alive. I'm not gonna let you kill Starlight, too. I told you. I don't want Starlight. I'm not buying another horse. Stevie said... How would she know anything? You're really not getting another horse? My parents were looking at a really expensive jumper. But I talked them out of it. Why? <laughs> you were right. If it wasn't for me, Robot would still be alive. He didn't want to jump that fence. But I whipped him. He didn't want to let me down. It's okay. You know, there's truth behind that old cliche, Sam. You've got to get right back on that horse again. If I hadn't challenged Veronica to that stupid jump off, nothing would have happened. It is not your fault, Sam. Veronica's the one who screwed up. But I pushed her. You didn't put Cobalt in danger. She did. Veronica knew what could happen if she rode recklessly. Nobody made her do it. I guess. Come on. Pepper's keen to try again. And you can take it real slow. Okay? 
I'll go get Pepper. What's wrong with you? Are they talking to each other? Dr. Judy! What is it? Something's wrong with Delilah. Dr. Judy, what's wrong? Follow me. Delilah, is she okay? What happened? Oh, she's just cranky. They're both doing fine. Both? We'll have a look just in case. What's wrong? Delilah's pregnant with Cobalt's fall. I wanted to tell you, Carol, but they swore me to secrecy. We wanted to make sure everything was okay first. You should have told me. When is she going to have the fall? About four and a half months. I can't wait. You ready to hear the heartbeat? I can hear it. Hey, Carol! <laughs> yeah, Carol. <laughs> Dad, stop it. You're totally embarrassing me. That's what dads are for. Check the manual. Don't turn it off. I think this next bit is where you and your mom had that water fight in the backyard. <laughs> Glad you're watching some of these. I wanted to watch the jumping. Well, no, that's on the other tape. I know. Every time I see mom, it's like... I always think about her in the hospital. Remember all the good times we had together? Before she got sick? I guess. Like when she brought the piglets home from the hospital. And we had to feed them a bottle every hour. <laughs> or that time you had that lemonade stand. Oh. Mom accidentally gave me the clam juice she was saving in the fridge. All the neighbors were complaining about fishy lemonade. <laughs> I wish she was here now. Me too. So you know what I do? I try to imagine what she would say. Stop moping around? <laughs> Maybe. Or she might ask... why you quit your job with Judy. What do you mean? Your mom would have been so proud of you, Carol. I kept screwing up. So what? Look, it doesn't matter if you were the worst vet in the world. Your mom would have thought you were the best. You know, there's some people in this world who shine so bright that just being near them makes you happy. That was mom. And that's you. You're a lot like her whether or not if you decide to become a vet. I still want to, but... But? Look, you can't stop loving something because you're afraid of being hurt. It's not that. It's confusing. Delilah's having Cobalt's fault. Well, that's great. Look, you should be excited. How 
can I be happy when Cobalt's gone? <sighs> then don't choose. Be both. Be happy for Delilah and, and sad because you miss Cobalt. And excited about the new fold. Look, feel it all at once. But it doesn't mean you don't love Cobalt. And I think if you do that, you might feel your mom close by. you might like to have this. When did you take that? At the open house last year. It's not a very good picture. You're welcome, Veronica. Dr. Judy. Hi, Carol. Um, if you need any help with Delilah's pregnancy. I'm counting on it. Really? Well, I could be there for the birth. I mean, if it's okay with you. Great. But that does not mean that I've decided to be a vet. Who says you have to? I kind of promised my mom. When you were how old? Six? Five. When I was five, I wanted to be a cat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all your mom wanted was for you to be happy. You know that I'm never, ever going to believe you ever again. How come? I can't believe you guys told me that Veronica was going to buy Starlight. It worked, didn't it? <laughs> I miss you guys. <laughs> job for once. Actually, I got Prance already. Really? Thanks. Don't thank me. I'm riding Prancer today. You are not. Max assigned her to me. <sighs> Who am I supposed to ride? If she sticks her nose up any higher, she won't be able to see where she's going. <sighs> Doesn't matter. Hatch doesn't look like he wants to go anywhere anyway. I'm not going to waste my time on a second-rate school pony. <laughs> Stop, you stupid nag! <laughs> You're not good enough to ride that horse, and I'm going to make sure everyone knows it. Can you believe Max put Lisa on Prancer? I'm way better than her. I've been riding for longer. I've got a bookshelf full of trophies. A whole wall covered in ribbons. Oh, hi, I'm looking for Red O'Malley. He was here oh, sure, a he's ago. around here somewhere. Actually, I think I saw him in the tack room. The what? Where are right the gear for the horses? Hey, Jake. I thought I heard your voice. <laughs> what are you doing here? He's so cute. <sighs> you can say that again. We're not gonna fight over a guy, are we? <laughs> no way. Look, unless we start practicing regularly, I mean, the barn's gonna fall apart, Red. I don't have any time. <sighs> Look, I mean, when you first came here, the, the barn was the most important thing to you. I mean, you know, what happened? I've got this job, more responsibility. Well, look, we all have to make sacrifices. Hey, I'm even prepared to cut school. Cut school. What a hero. Of course, we could always get a new lead guitar. 
There is this one guy. Don't approach me. Hey. All right, I'll see what I can do. Come in. Hi, Max. How you going? Still fighting the paper war. You should take some time off. I said goodbye to that when I took over this place. But if you work all the time, you know, you, you don't get around to the other things in life, the, the important things. Well, I appreciate the concern, Red, but are we talking about me here? No, just generally. Which includes you, right? Well, yeah. How much time do you want off? Just one day. Which one? Saturday. Ah, oh, not the Saturday, Red. Hey. Hi. Hi, Red. Yeah, hi. Great to see you. You too. <clears throat> Uh, look, Red, uh, if you can find some, someone to do some part-time work, then you can take this Saturday. Okay? Thanks. I've got someone in mind. So? The best part was the look on Veronica's face. <laughs> Stop it, you're scaring me. <laughs> Come on, give Veronica a break. She's probably still upset about Cobalt. Whose side are you on? All I'm saying is maybe she's acting weird because... She's not upset. She's being selfish. That's Veronica. I wasn't saying Veronica should ride Prancer. Oh, hi. I didn't think you'd still be here. I'm Christy. Jake. Is it hard learning the guitar? You've just got to practice. Could you teach me something? Sure. Um, I'm working on something new right now. No, get comfortable with it, right? Pull the body in closer. Closer. I'm Veronica. He's Jake. How are you doing, Veronica? Coping. <laughs> Jake's teaching me one of his songs. I write songs and poems. I could let you see them if you like. Yeah, cool. I'll bring some in. Come on, Christy, let's go. My mum's picking us up early today, so if you want to ride home... But your mum's never early. It's a very long walk to your place. <sighs> Thanks for the lesson, Jake. I'm Phil. You ride here? No, I'm waiting for Red. I help you? What's your secret? What? Veronica and Christy, they were all over you. Yeah. So how do you do it? I don't know. I'm trying to ask this girl out, but it's not happening. I know I'm doing something wrong, but I don't know what. It's just that you seem like you're good at talking to girls. I was wondering if you could give me a few tips. Tell them they look good. You mean like compliments? Sure. Girls love it whenever you tell them that their hair looks good or their clothes, whatever. Compliments? It's that simple. Girls are not complicated, trust me. Prancer, what's wrong? Are you sick? Max! Yeah? Could you look at Prancer for me? She doesn't seem herself, does she? Will she be okay to ride? Yeah, I think so. She'll probably pick up during the morning. If you can't do it, get out of the way. A horse is only as good as its rider. You'd better call it a day, Lisa. There's something wrong with Prancer. I'll ask her to check on her feed. Okay. And just a short call out around the yard. Don't take her up to the quarry. Hey, 
Hey, like your shirt. It's new, isn't it? It's Chad's. I wish I had a brother who could share his clothes. So do I. You didn't ask? He'll never know I wore it. <gasps> You're right, he'll never notice. He's gonna kill me. What do you do with soda? Most people drink it. Carol. Okay, I'll go get Mrs. Reg. She knows everything. Coming through. Hi, Stevie. I really like your shirt. What? Your shirt. It's good. What's good about it? For one thing, the color. So I spilt a little soda on it. Glad you think it's so funny. Here, this will keep you warm. You okay? I'm fine, but Prances still seems sick or something. All horses have off days. She'll come around. She's just slacking off because you put a novice rider on her, Max. I don't consider Lisa a novice anymore, Veronica. Compared to me, she's novice. Isn't that right, Max? You are definitely more experienced, Veronica. No one could deny that. Maybe Veronica's right. Maybe she should ride Prancer. I don't want you to lose your confidence. It's all right, Max. I'm missing Patch anyway. Just tomorrow. Of course. Unless Prancer improves dramatically with me riding her. And believe me, she will. I like that shirt. Tell that to someone who cares, Phil. Red, did you check Prince's feed? I double checked it. It's fine. I wonder what it can be then. We don't know what's up with Prancer right now, but all the horses have been put on a carefully planned feed schedule. I don't want anybody giving them anything extra. Not even carrots? No, and no jelly beans. No jelly beans. We had a girl here who used to treat a horse to extra oats and it turned into a steeplechaser who jumped every fence in sight. Hey, Red, hold up. So, you help out work here. I'll get time off. We get a band rehearsal. But I, I'm not interested in horses. So what are you doing here, Jake? Oh, I am just hanging around. Yeah, right. Is Christy and Veronica? Aren't they a little young for you? What can I say? Can't help it if they dig me. Must be my Irish charm. Irish blarney. <laughs> Take the job and hang around here. Get paid for it. We might get some rehearsals. Oh, yuck. I don't do horse manure. It's not working for me. The compliment thing. Really? Well, try playing a coup. Play it cool? Ignore her. Are you sure? But she's already ignoring me. If I ignore her too, then we might as well be on different planets. Look, you asked for my advice, you've got it. Right. Ignore her. Hello, girl. I've got some words for you. Come on, Prancer. Eat up. You'll be flying over those jumps tomorrow. Excellent, Veronica. You've either got it or you don't. Right, Lisa?
Stevie, you're up. Hey, Lisa. I know how much Prancer means to you, so I'll let you call her out. It's the only way you'll get to ride her. Lisa doesn't have to do your chores. It's okay, I want to. I'll put Patch away and then we'll take Prancer up to the quarry with us. Why don't you ask Phil to come? No way, he totally insulted me yesterday. What did he say? It's not what he said, it's how he said it. Which is how? Well, it's hard to explain. Go ask him, Stevie. We're going up to the quarry trail. Do you want to come? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'm busy. Busy doing what? Stuff? Is there something in that fireplace? Could be. Something not visible to the human eye? Maybe. Well, we're going now. Okay. It's got to be something Veronica is doing. Like what? Something to make her look good and you look bad. You mean she made Prancer sick? Veronica wouldn't do something like that. Lisa, think about it. She's mad you got Prancer. And suddenly Prancer starts acting all weird when you ride her? And perfect when she rides her. Exactly. Or she gets the best out of the horse, and I don't. That's what she wants you to believe. We need to go talk to Veronica. You don't have any proof. So we'll find some. You coming? I'll catch up with you later. <sighs> She's still around. There's her coat and bag. She's probably drooling over that friend of Red's. There's probably lots of evidence in that bag. But we can't just go through her stuff. You're right. <laughs> Aha! This proves she's been torturing Prancer. With an eyelash curler? She could be. All it proves is that Veronica is vain. <laughs> what are you girls doing going through Veronica's things? Where's everyone else? Don't you mean, where's Stevie? Why would I want to talk to Stevie? Because you like her? Who says? <laughs> and she likes you. Really? Looks like it to me. But every time I try to talk to her, she gets angry at me. And when I ignore her, she walks off. Don't ignore her. She hates that. And so do I. That's Oleander. It's poisonous. Poisonous? Definitely owe her an apology. We weren't going through her stuff. Not really. Aha, there you are. Stevie and Carol have something they want to say. Did you give her oats? Just as a treat. You know you're not supposed to give her anything. But she was hungry. You gave her oats to boost her energy. Well... Uh, I thought it might make her feel better. <laughs> Red explained the feed schedule very carefully. You're suspended from lessons until further notice. What? You can't do that! Just watch me. And if you're lucky, I might, just might, let you ride Patch again. <laughs> Max! Max! It's Prancer! She's been poisoned! It's a little distended. Nothing really serious. Eyes are a bit glassy. Hmm. Temperature's pretty normal. 
Well, Prancer didn't eat very much, so uh, I'd say she'll be all right in about 24 hours. Thanks, Dr. Judy. I knew it wasn't your riding. We took Prancer up to the quarry after your first lesson. She ate the oleander and was sick the next day. And I didn't take her up that day. So, by the time Veronica rode her, she was fine. Well, congratulations to whoever knew that oleander was poisonous. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Another satisfied customer. What was it? Playing a coup? Oleander. Oleander? How does that work? Don't worry. You had to be there. Oh, hey, Ray. Are we still on for Saturday? Or are you, you know, going to stay here and clean up after horses? I told you I have to work. Why don't you come help me out? And let the guys down. No way. Oh, oh, hey, hey. Oh, oh. Watch yourself. Thanks. Ah, <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Jake. Oh, hi, Deborah Hale. Great, yeah. Hey, are you early or am I late? Um, I'm late. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You must be Red's friend. Hi, I'm Jake, yes. Jake's going to work for us part-time. What? Yes, of course I am. Good. Red will tell you what to do. Looks like he gets Saturday off. Sorry. What are you talking about? Is it Deborah? I'm just trying to help. Jake's not right for you. It's more than just Jake and me. It's Jake, me and the music. And what about Red? It was a crush. But with Jake and me, it's a relationship. It's way more mature. So it's Red yesterday, Jake today. Who's it going to be tomorrow? Jake. And the day after that. And the day after that. And the day after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I get the picture. But look, I'm sorry. Because Jake has said some pretty amazing personal things to me. Like what? When he was reading my poetry, you know what he said? Veronica, don't ever show this to anyone else because they won't understand. But you know what he said to me? He said, Christy, music will always keep us together. <sighs> OK, OK. This is what we're going to do. Let him decide. Right, let's do it. Nice shirt, Jake. Yeah, but do you like music? Yeah, very much. I'm a musician. Really? What instrument do you play? I play the guitar. Oh, I've always wanted to learn to play guitar. Well, I can teach you if you want. I mean, you know, I'd, I'd really love to teach you. I, I... That's really nice of you, Jake. Oh, there you are. You set? We've got to go. Do. Uh, well, I'll, I'll be here if you need, need me for now. She's way too old for him. He must be so desperate. Look, I got I gotta go. Wait up. Do you need any help with anything? I'm free. OK. with Dr. Judy at the impending birth of Delilah and Cobalt's baby. So tell me, Dr. Judy, what's the scoop? Delilah's looking good. She could go into labor any day now. How will we know when that happens? Delilah will let us know. Contractions hurt. You heard it here first, folks. Contractions hurt. Full expected soon. This is Stevie Lake signing off for Full Watch. And cut. Wait, don't stop filming. Dr. Judy hasn't finished the exam yet. I know, but I have to say some film for the actual bird. It could happen any minute now. Well, Lisa and I hope it's not today. I'm going out with the girls. And I've got my audition for a school play. <laughs> I shouldn't worry. The croup isn't relaxed, so it probably won't happen for a couple of days yet. But what if it does? Mayors deliver healthy foals all the time. Usually it happens so fast, the vet doesn't even get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd die if we missed it. We could ask Max if we can sleep over. Oh, and mount a full watch. You promise to come while Tina's here, and I'll give you all the apples you can eat. Now, is Tina that lovely red-headed girl whose parents moved a few years ago? 
Yeah, we were like twins, both brilliant, charming, horse crazy, and... And humble. Don't forget humble. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Beats me. I hope she's not planning on riding in that getup. Sadie! I can't believe it! <laughs> oh, you look exactly the same! Uh, oh, yeah, you too, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Tina? Is that you? In the flesh. Oh, you look so good. Thanks. You used to look like, well, Stevie. See, some things never change. Pray don't talk to me about the weather, Mr Worthing. Better than talking I... about your acting. You're not going for the part of Gwendolyn. Shouldn't you try for something a bit more realistic? Like, ticket seller? Do you think you'll get the lead? Let's see. Gwendolyn is a tall, blonde, beautiful heiress. Who else? Oh, and Lisa. Save some tickets for my parents. They love to see me in the spotlight. OK, Melanie, from the top. Wow, Stevie, you haven't changed. This room looks like it did a year ago. I'm not exactly a neat freak. You can say that again. I think I left this shoe here last year. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Is it me? <laughs> you can borrow it if you want. Thanks. So what do you want to do? We could go for a hack. You want to see Comanche jump? We're getting really good. Actually, I told Christy to come over. Christy? But we hate her. I don't know. She seems kind of cool now. You don't mind, do you? What about Fall Watch? Oh, I want... I mean, I told Carol we'd be there. We can still go. Later. Blue eyes you have, Ernest. They are quite, quite blue. Hello, Stevie. Hey, Stevie. What about indigo for a boy and sapphire for a girl? What? Oh, names to the fall. Are you taking a shower? I forgot how much horses smell. <sighs> Stevie, are you listening? Oh, what? Yeah, it sounds great. Look, Tina and I have plans, but we'll be at the stables as soon as we can. Are you okay? You sound different. Yeah, I'm fine. I'll talk to you later. Bye. What wonderful eyes you have. No. What wonderfully blue eyes you have, Ernest. They are quite, quite... Guess what? Lisa thinks she's got a chance at the role of Gwendolyn. Isn't that hilarious? About the play... I know. We'd better start rehearsing. Actually, I'm going to pass. I was thinking about hanging out with Tina. Oh. Well, I guess I could do that too. No, I wouldn't want you to miss your audition. Tina and I'll catch up with you later. Remember the time Patch took off across the field with you on him? Remember, my butt's still sore. My stomach's still sore from laughing. <laughs> and remember the time... Christy! Hi. Cool wearing. <laughs> I love your shoes. Remember Brad from the football team? The Robo Bay. He totally wants to see you again. He's at the mall. No way. I have to change. What am I going to wear? You better hurry. I don't know how long he's going to be there. Oh, you're leaving now? But I told Carol we'd be at the stables. That's right, full watch. That's OK. You go ahead. Christy and I can hang out. No, wait. I'm coming. I just have to do something first. This is Cobalt, the father. He'd want to be here for the birth. Hello. Carol's 
Stevie wants to talk to you. Finally, where is she? Where are you? You said you were going to be here by now. Something's come up. What's more important than the foal? Carol, Tina's only in town for today. I'll help it with foal watch later. Besides, who knows when Delilah will fold? It could be days. You know what Dr. Judy said. Look, it's no big deal, right? Fine. If you don't think it's a big deal, don't bother coming at all. Bye. Let's go. Stevie's gonna miss the whole thing. She doesn't even care. Dr. Judy said Delilah probably won't fall for days. Not you too. I'm not copping out. It's just... I've got my audition, so it's really important to me. And I can't concentrate on my lines here. There's too much going on. I really, really want this part, Carol. I die, Veronica got it. It's only for tonight. I'll do the sleepover tomorrow, I promise. Fine. Great, I knew you'd understand. I understand, all right. They don't care about Delilah, or the new foal, or me. <laughs> it moved! I felt it move! Brad is a dream, even better than I remembered. He's up for this year's football medal. He's so mature. Not like some of the guys in my grade. Yeah, mine too. Oh, we have to decide what we're going to wear tonight. Why don't we go to the stables first? The only reason to go to the stables is to see Red. And Red's had the day off. Is there anything in the fridge? I'm starving. Sure, help yourselves. Hey, where's the rest of the Fall Watch team? Guess they had more exciting things to do than watch a fall being born. Well, they're your best friends. I'll show up. Not tonight. Well, if it helps, Delilah doesn't look like she's going to fall anytime soon. We've got to go. Right. You going to be OK? Yeah. You guys have a great time. And if anything happens, you can contact us on Dib's cell phone. Number's on the board, OK? OK. supposed to last you all night. The fall is turning. Deborah. Deborah Hale. I think they're interviewing ushers down the hall. I've got as much chance of getting this part as you, Veronica. Dream on, Lisa. Ugh. Lisa. Hello. No way. I'll try, but I'm supposed to do my audition. Hello? Carol? Delilah's gonna have a baby. Good, you better go, right now. 
Don't you want to come? It is Cobalt's fault. <laughs> nice try. You want me to leave so they have to give you the part. Oh, I'll see it tomorrow when it's clean. <laughs> I'd die if Brad saw us like oh, this. Oh no, it's cracking, I can't smile. <laughs> there, finished. Are you sure you don't want me to put this face pack on you? Totally sure. I think it's time we join Carol. She'll let us know if anything happens. Don't you want to go? <laughs> Look, Stevie, I'm not so into horses as I used to be. I stopped riding when we moved to the city. But you love horses. I used to. It's no big deal. Horses are a phase most kids go through, but there's more to life than mucking out stalls. <laughs> You'll see, you grow out of it too. Actually, I think I have to go. Why, what's wrong? There's something I've got to do. Like what? You wouldn't understand. It's too immature for you. A uh, Stevie. <laughs> <sighs> Delilah's water broke 10 minutes ago. So far, so good. Now we're just waiting for the baby. Carol, is it starting? Shh, can you be any louder? Sorry, what's happening? Don't worry about it. I know you have more important things to do. Did I miss anything? Help Delilah. Shh. Shh. Oh, she's in labor right now. What do we do? Nothing. Don't be like that, Carol. We're here now. Yeah, now, where were you when she was waxing up and when her tail had to be wrapped and when her water broke? I thought we were going to do this together. We are. <laughs> I was the one who stayed here while you guys just left. Get over it. You're acting like we took off on you or something. You did. That's not true. Dr. Judy said the phone be <laughs> We have to call Dr. Judy. <laughs> Battery's dead. <laughs> I'm not going to get there for about an hour. I won't be in time to help. What if something goes wrong? Calm down. Mares deliver healthy foals all the time. It'll be so fast, you'll be lucky if you don't miss it. What's she doing now? What is she doing now? She's breathing really hard and looks scared. She's breathing hard and looks scared. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes. She'll be fine. Just let her do the work. What can you see? Carol, what can you see? Can you see the foal's feet? <laughs> Nothing. She can't see anything. Tell her to look carefully. Hold on. I think I can see something. It's coming! I can see its feet. It's coming! Lisa? Stevie, are you there? Carol, the video! present for the baby. Lisa, what's its name? Oh yeah, we haven't decided. Um, see an indigo? I don't know. What do you think? A horse? Yeah, he'd look kind of stupid with a teddy bear, wouldn't he? <laughs> Thanks. I'll call next time I'm in town. You know where to find me. You're not gonna give up on this horse thing, are you? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Tina's 
leaving today. Oh. Did you get the part? No. They gave it to Cindy Browning. Her father just happens to be on the board. It sickens me the way people abuse their positions like that. Did Lisa totally suck? She would have, but she left. She wanted to see the foal. What's with everyone? It's just a baby horse. It's not going anywhere. That's what I said. Do you want to hang out after the lesson? Sure. Come on, Stevie. We have to give him a name. Carol should choose. You're the one who stuck it out with Delilah. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to think of a name that has something to do with cobalt, like sapphire or indigo. But what about something to do with Delilah? I was thinking maybe Samson? You know, like Samson and Delilah. That's perfect. Welcome to Pine Hollow, Samson.